Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and today, two weeks after both unveiling and releasing the first beta iteration of iOS 8, Apple has ceded iOS 8 Beta 2 to registered iOS developers. Now today, I'm here on my secondary channel, ICUID. Subscribe to my main channel if you aren't already, I crack your eye device. I'll have links on the screen now via annotations if you're on the desktop version of YouTube. And I'm going to show you guys how it's technically possible to install the latest beta version on a device that doesn't have its UDID registered through an Apple developer account. And in this video, again, I'm going to be demonstrating it on my fifth generation iPod Touch, which actually doesn't have a rear facing camera because it is the lower end 16 gigabyte variation. Now, I must mention a few things before actually moving on. First of all, this video is for educational purposes only, and for that exact reason, I will not provide direct download links. I actually have iOS 8 beta 2 on my desktop right now because I am a registered iOS developer and I downloaded the IPSW through, again, my developer account, so I will not provide actual download links. You can only officially download iOS 8 beta too if you are enrolled in Apple's developer program. So with that said, again, keep in mind this video is for educational purposes only. Also, the second thing I need to mention is that if you're not registered, you may very well encounter various activation issues once you actually install iOS 8 beta 2, especially if you were to connect to iTunes after the install. Now, the best process to actually do this is to restore to iOS 7.1.1, restore from a previous backup, follow the method highlighted in this tutorial to upgrade to iOS 8 and then do not connect to iTunes from there. You will however be able to sign into iCloud and use things as you normally would on your iDevice and you would still retain all data. This is the absolute best way to do it. Also if you're on the first beta iteration of iOS 8 without being registered, you will in fact have to downgrade back to iOS 7.1.1 and you won't actually be able to restore from your backup on iOS 8 so you'd have to restore from a pre previous backup on 7.1.1 or earlier, and then upgrade to iOS 8. So again, I'm going to highlight that one last time. You will need to be on iOS 7.1.1, so if you're jailbroken, that will definitely cause complications, and I recommend that you avoid updating or at least seriously consider the risks involved, especially since you could very well encounter activation issues or activation errors. But once you're on 7.1.1, you restore from your backup to retrieve all data, and then you can actually follow the method. Again, I'm going to demonstrate right now to upgrade to iOS 8 beta 2. Also so keep in mind that if you encounter activation issues with the data restored from your previous backup, it is best to just go with a clean install of 7.1.1 to iOS 8. Now with that out of the way, I'm going to go inside of the settings app, general, and then followed by about to show you guys that this fifth generation iPod Touch is indeed on iOS 7.1.1. And as you can see down below for the version, it does confirm that this iPod Touch is running iOS 7.1.1, Apple's latest public firmware. All right, and of course, hypothetically speaking, what you'd need is the iOS 8.0 Beta 2 IPSW officially downloaded through Apple's developer portal. And I'm going to be highlighting a security flaw in Apple's iTunes update system, so keep that in mind. And at this point, you can connect your device to your computer and open iTunes, which should be the latest version, by the way. And if iTunes pops up and it's syncing, either wait for that to complete or cancel out of it and actually get to the device portion inside of iTunes. All right, I'm here, I've adjusted the window, I've zoomed in a little bit, and what you're going to do at this point, once your device is connected and on iOS 7.1.1, is hold down either the Option or Alt key if you're on an OS X Mac, or Shift if you're on a Windows-based PC, and then click Check for Update. It's extremely important that you don't click Restore, because if you do, you will definitely encounter errors. So again, in this case, I'm going to hold down Alt or Option, and then left click on restore. If I were on Windows, I would do the same thing except hold down the shift key. And once you do that, you will get a window to actually browse for the iOS 8 beta 2 IPSW. I'm just going to point iTunes at that file and then hit open from there. And it's going to ask you if you want to update your device to iOS 8.0. I'm going to click update and then it will just go through the
through the install process. It's going to extract the software and it's actually going to go through multiple verification checkpoints. However, because we are technically taking advantage of a bypass method, it will actually skip that process, but it will take some time. So I'm actually going to leave the iPod touch here up on the display throughout the duration of this process, just so you guys can get a feel for it and see approximately how long it should take. Again, it can definitely vary though, depending on your device. Now I'm going to leave iTunes up as well, just so I can kind of narrate the different steps that it's at. So right now, of course, it's saying it's preparing the iPod for a software update and the iPod is actually restarting right now into recovery mode. And now inside of iTunes, it's just saying that it's waiting for the iPod. And we actually have a little progress bar down here at the bottom. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but I assure you it is there. And you'll also notice that as this process continues. Again though, if you don't wanna to have to sit around and wait for this and you wanna actually see when iOS 8 is installed on this iPod Touch, again, without its UDID being registered through an Apple developer program, just be sure to click on the annotation that should be on the screen now to fast forward. All right, and it's saying it's verifying the updated iPod software. Now this is just one of the verification checks it performs. Do not be alarmed if again, it goes through multiple verification processes because I guarantee you it will. All right, and actually, sorry about that, guys. I bumped the camera a little bit, but as I was saying, it's actually updating the iPod software right now. Inside of iTunes, we have a progress bar that's actually further along than the progress bar here on the iPod Touch. Don't worry though, it will continue and it will proceed because it has a few extra steps after actually updating the iPod software inside of iTunes that it will perform. Remember, it will go through numerous verification checks. All right, and it's actually moved past updating the iPod software, at least inside of iTunes. And like I said, it is verifying the updated iPod software. It will continue, and we still have a ways to go before the restore is fully complete. All right, it's actually moved past verifying. It went to updating iPod software and now it's back at verifying.
All right, there you have it. The iPod Touch is actually turned off and inside of iTunes, we have a new pop-up saying that it's restarting. So once the iPod Touch comes back up, we'll go over iOS 8 briefly. And then it's just going through the regular reboot. We'll have a progress bar after that because it needs to update some files. And then we actually have to go through some quick update settings on the device. So I'm just going to leave it up on the screen now. As you can see, it is updating the files now post iOS 8 install. So let's just wait for this to complete. All right, here we are. It looks like we're actually in the portion, like I mentioned earlier, to go through some of the various update settings. So I'll just slide to continue. It says update complete. I'm going to disable location services. And some things may take a while, especially if you're on an iPod touch. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to skip this step as well. And we're just going to get through this as quickly as possible. Also unplug your device at this point because you do not want it connected to iTunes. So I'm going to continue and I'm not going to add a passcode. So let's continue past that. And now we can get started. Now remember at this point, you cannot connect back to iTunes. So if you wanted your data on your device, you would have had to have restored to 7.1.1, then restored to a backup and followed these steps. And now for the good part, inside of settings general about, you will notice that this iPod touch is now on 8.0. So yes, we are on iOS 8. I'm going to take the iPod off the screen here and refocus. All right, and for some quick and additional proof, I'm going to slide to the second page here and you will notice I have the new health app that Apple demoed at WWDC when they actually unveiled iOS 8 itself. So as you can see, I am definitely running iOS 8 beta on my fifth generation iPod touch here and it's UDI isn't registered through Apple's developer program because again, we did take advantage of a security flaw in Apple's update system. Keep in mind though, you will not be able to connect back to iTunes after you've done this. I'm actually going to reboot because some people are claiming that when you reboot, it will encounter issues if the UDID isn't registered. And now that's not the case if you disconnect quickly enough. So I'm going to just reboot the iPod touch here. And it's also probably best if you are to reboot it immediately after the install of iOS 8. That way you know for sure where things stand and you know if you will encounter activation issues. So the iPod Touch is coming back on now. I'm going to leave it up on the screen so you guys can see throughout the duration of this reboot that again, it will be on iOS 8 beta 2 and we will not encounter any activation issues. And now this is also probably a good time to mention Best Tech Info has received a complete upgrade and I'm going to be posting on it on a regular basis. So just be sure to visit besttechinfo.com if you haven't recently, it's really quite amazing and I really recommend it to anyone interested in tech, gaming, Apple, and really Google. So just be sure to check out besttechinfo.com.
All right, as you can see, here we are just at the lock screen and I can slide to unlock and I can use my iPod Touch on iOS 8 Beta 2 just fine without encountering any activation errors. All right, and that's pretty much it for this video. Remember that this isn't a permanent solution by any means. It's for educational purposes only. I will not provide download links for that reason. And if you like this video, just be sure to rate it up and leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section. Also, if you're interested in earning paid iOS apps from Apple's App Store, for free legally while simultaneously supporting the developers of said applications, just be sure to visit freeapplife.com or bit.ly forward slash get free app life inside of Safari. And then once downloaded, install sponsored apps for points and then redeem said points for various prizes such as paid app codes from Apple's App Store, gift cards, and bigger electronic devices. All right, and that's it for this video. Stay tuned for more, especially on my main channel, I Crack Your Eye Device, and my secondary channel where this video is posted, ICUID. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.